Oz has, has a question that he asks of all congressional candidates. Are you aware of how many veterans commit suicide every year? I believe it's every year or every day, because I think I got it down to the day, about 22 yeah. veterans a day. Good. Okay. Which is all right, Oz, does that pass? <laughs> That's good. That um, no, oh, and no, then, no. then right, follow up. Ben. What do you want to do about that? I want to know. Yeah. We don't get to move in the next. What do you want to do about that? Just, you okay. know, what well, I'm if we're going to pass any kind of military budget, we should be passing it to make sure that it, it we have uh, veteran benefits, that we have an ability to transition um, uh, our veterans from, from battle to an appropriate and stable living conditions, getting them the adequate health care that they need, getting them the benefits that they deserve, because we owe them a debt of gratitude that right now is not being fulfilled. Absolutely. All right. Well said. Thank you. Next, Lori. Okay. Talk about being a Harvey hero. People mm. want to hear about that. What's this? Oh, goodness. It is just reliving it, just thinking about it. It really does get to me because it was a moment in, in time in my life where I literally thought I was going to lose my life. And I was tweeting with other candidates on a different Twitter messenger. And I told them, it's for some reason, I do not make it out. Promise me that you will do something about climate change. That night when it was happening, we knew we were going to get the dirty side of the storm, but we had no idea how many inches it was going to be. We thought maybe 20 something, you know, maybe 15, but then reports started coming in that it would be somewhere around 52, 56 inches. Most of downtown starts to go underwater after four, four wow. inches. Wow. So we flooded first. And when it happened, I was watching this, the water level rise in the street. And then it started going over our sidewalk. And then it started going up on our driveway coming in through our garage and our house sits up higher than most homes in our street it was around 1 1 30 1 40 in the morning when my neighbor down the street she calls me and i ask her are you okay because if the water is in my garage there's water everywhere in your home she says there is we need you to come and get us because the water's rising so i told my husband without hesitation get your boots on we're going outside <laughs> And he says, what's the matter? I said, well, they need our help. They need to get out. And we went. And going through, we didn't go through the street or the sidewalk. We went as close to the homes as possible because the water was already three feet high near the homes. Once I got to the street to uh, go across the street to go get my neighbor and her grandsons and um, the neighbor to come over, the water was up to my ears. Now, I'm five foot two. Five foot three with sneakers. <laughs> the water was up to my ears. Wow. I was tippy toeing in there. There was a current dragging me to the side as I was trying to stay stable and grab my neighbor's hand to pull her over to the other side of the street. Wow. I handed over her grandson who was two year two or three years old. He was in a uh, in a t shirt and underwear, freezing cold. Handed him over to my husband who put him in his rain jacket covering him up told my husband, go take them to our home and I will get her other grandson and his friend across the street. I crossed them over. We went back inside. I asked them, where's your grandpa? Is he going? And he says, no, he wants to stay. Hmm. About 20, 30 minutes later, he calls and he's and his, um, the grandfather says, I think I want to leave now. I want to go over there. And this was already, I already changed. We're already in dry clothes. You said um, too late. You, you missed the and no, I said, hold up. I hung up the phone. I threw the phone to my husband. I said, here, catch. And he says, where are you going? I ran out the door. I, I didn't even have time to answer. And when I got there, I thought he was already crossing over and I couldn't find him. I kept calling his name. Wow. Couldn't find him. Went back home and I said, did he make it back? I said, no, he didn't. I said, is he answering his phone? They said, he's not. I went back out. And this is walking about four houses down the block. And I start to panic because I'm thinking he probably got swept away. He probably is floating downstream. I don't know. I saw something float in the water and I thought it was him and I just started to cry. And goodness. I, I went ahead and I, I crossed the street and opened the front door and water starts pouring out of his house. 
and I'm calling his name and he doesn't answer. And finally he says, I'm over here. And I, I just like, thank goodness. I was wondering where the hell you were. <laughs> and um, he says, I was trying to get my wallet. And I said, that seems kind of important to you right now. I understand, but we need to get you to a dry place right now. Right. So I held his hand and we, he didn't think it was that deep until he finally got into the water. And he said, this is pretty deep. I said, yes, it's very deep. I said, but just hold on to me and we'll get through this. This man is in his 70s, late 70s. He's an uh, Air Force mechanic, wow. veteran. And um, I certainly wasn't going to leave him there. So I brought him over to my house. And they stayed in our house in one of the only two dry rooms. The dry, one of the dry rooms in our home was our bedroom. I'm sorry, um, the bathroom and my son's bedroom. And uh, that night there was about 12 people in my house. And I didn't go to sleep until probably four o'clock in the morning, only to wake up at three and find that there's still a roof over our head with a hole in the roof with water coming in our home. Wow. Wow. And my, my car got flooded. My neighbor's homes got flooded. The next day, we waited to see what was happening. My neighbor, right, you know, my next door neighbor, she went into labor late at night um, the firemen came in. They ended up taking her in and uh, taking her in, in a helicopter to the downtown medical center to give birth to her child after 17 hours in labor. It was a hectic night. Um, the next few days, I spent organizing, calling people, um, asking to see how they are, how they're doing. Friends of mine were on boats rescuing people, and there I am in my home feeling helpless because I can't hop in my car because it's flooded out to go and help people. I, I couldn't. So I did the next best thing is I got on my phone and I started making phone calls. What do you need? What can we help you with? Nice. Um, my neighbors down the street went to their home. They had about four feet of water inside. And immediately I asked them, when will people come in and to help you? They said, we don't know. So the next day I got a box cutter. I got my boots on. I got my gloves on and I started mucking. I started gutting. I started cutting up carpet and taking it out right. because I certainly knew that my neighbors wouldn't be able to given everything that they'd gone through and their health was not in good condition. So I did what I could and they, they are forever grateful and I am glad that I was able to do that. And they told me, I don't think anyone would have done what you have done. Mm 